thank God for Instagram because that's the only reason this thing exists. Let's check it out. Introducing the all new Nevada Grinchin Antarctic Spider Sector reissue. And wow, this is definitely eye candy. So, an owner of the original shared his photo on Instagram with Nevada, and Nevada reshared it to their fans. And the response was massive. And that's when they knew this watch had to be remade. And thank God for that because it's just a stunner. Look at the legs of the spider just absorbing my light. Nevada Grinchin is one of those zombie brands that have come back from the dead and we enthusiasts are only going to benefit from. Originating in 1926, they were one of the first watch manufacturers in the 30s to make automatic movements. And in 1950s, the Antarctic was born and it was one of the first waterproof watches worn by the US Navy on the deep freeze missions to conquer the South Pole. So great history here. And can you imagine a bright silver dial in whiteout conditions in the snow? Legibility, of course, is a negative. But you know what? When you're looking down at something gorgeous like this, you want to spend a couple extra seconds to admire its absolute beauty. And in 1964, they did make the world's first diver with a built-in depth gauge. Fantastic brand with great history. And they're giving us a watch with personality, an icy cold chill to the dial. Just looking at this watch, ooh, makes me shiver. Sapphire crystal with a beautiful dome with a light hint of blue AR, not overdone. Gives it that great distortion. 316L stainless steel, and now in a bigger size. The original was 35 mil. This one, let's do the dimensions. We have 38 millimeters in diameter, a thickness of 11.4, including that sapphire, no drilled lugs, and a lug to lug of 44.9. Fantastic modern vintage proportions. <laughs> And it's a great size for me. I love 38 millimeter. I'm going to show you the watch on my six and a half inch wrist from a distance during the B-roll. The crown is 4.8 millimeters, nice and proportional, not oversized, screw down, giving the watch 100 meters of water resistance and look at that unique case. Beautiful chamfer on the top of the lugs, flat and high polished. It has it on all four lugs. You know what that looks like to me? spider's legs just like on the dial those eight vertical applied indices mimicking spider's leg attached by that sector in the middle what a gorgeous cohesive design the case is just so interesting we have immaculate brushing on the sides of the case and a beautiful laser sharp high polished bevel on the bottom that travels throughout the case for comfort on the wrist and the brushing is rounded out on the top of the lugs right before that flat high contrast polished chamfer spider foot beautiful beautiful execution i love it the bracelet is 20 down to 18 slight taper Solid end links, solid links, screwed links, beads of rice, excellent articulation, ultra comfortable. The end link just covers the gap on that spider leg lug and it fills it out nicely. I'm going to put it on this Nevada Grenchen Tropic Strap so you guys can check it out there and you'll be able to see the lug hole better because that end link is covering it up. That's why it has such a unique style. The clasp, friction fit. High polish on the sides, and there's the Nevada logo. You just lift, and we do have a pressed clasp, but it's solid and no hot spots. We do have four micro adjusts. The case back is flat and simple with the Nevada logo and some information. It comes in at 975 USD for a watch that's Swiss made with actual exploration historic pedigree. Um, you know what? That's a compelling price. The star of the show is definitely the minimalistic spider sector dial just works. The cardinals are empty. There's no indices, but we do have a date at three and the brand name Nevada Antarctic at nine. You can see tiny loom plots on the inside of the legs. So there's only eight and a small strip in the middle of the Dauphine hand that are completely high polished, just like the seconds hand. I will admit it was a little bit difficult to read, but not that difficult. We are watch enthusiasts. 
No one reads the time more than us. In some situations, it's going to be impossible. And in others, it's going to be just as quick as any ordinary watch. Okay, weight on the strap, 76 grams. On the bracelet size for my wrist, it was 115. So ultra lightweight and comfortable. The movement for this watch for the first time on the channel, so prod P024, basically an ETA 2824 clone. So you're still getting that Swiss made high beat 288 VPH, 25 joules, hack hand wind automatic, about 38 to 40 hours of power reserve. But look at these numbers. 33, we're gonna ignore. Powerful amplitude at 300, little bit of error at 0.1. 14, 15, 15, 15 as the fourth and final round. Okay, we're gonna do 12 down now to see the positional variance. How is it gonna react on your wrist? Now the base ETA is regulated to plus 12 and minus 12. This one, uh, it's a little bit out of spec from the base ETA because we got plus 15. Let's ignore the first number at plus 24. Amplitude is still strong, 275. B error about the same, 0.2. All right, so nine, 11, 11, and the fourth and final round, nine. Okay, there is the loom shot. There's basically no loom on the dial. The hands, you can see them a little bit, but they are faux patinaed, so that's making matters much worse. So I'm gonna say terrible loom. This watch is absolutely gorgeous. It wears fantastic. It has a beautiful, unique case. Great material, sapphire crystal, Swiss made. Wish they regulated the movement, and I'm not gonna wish for more loom. It doesn't need it. This watch is not about that and it's just about pure style, vintage flair, and I love it. And guys, if you're still here, please remember to subscribe and maybe watch one of the videos you see on the right of your screen right now, and I'll see you in the next one.